this is uh, our last uh, meeting, if I am correct. Um, and uh, as we agreed, we would like to introduce a little bit about the about uh, to introduce our local labs a little bit so that you can see how uh, we put things into practice. And that is also going to be a part where we will be introducing, um, uh, describing a little bit the uh, the main topic of the of, of this of uh, today's presentation um, regarding the uh, qualifications and uh, um, we will stick to the main uh, plan as well so we don't just want to focus on the local action plans um, so I'm going to, to speak a little bit about the the, the um, local labs and the plans and uh, how they they fit with the entire uh, with the project and also how they fit with uh, with the, the work that we do and Dana is going to have the pleasure of introducing qualifications and transferability and ECVET and EQF to all of you. Um, one second. Okay. Um, Alternative Sociale, as you may know already from uh, the previous presentations, um, is an organization that focuses on, on, on several uh, topics. We focus on human rights in general, but we have some approaches that we develop over the years and that we favor. We, we, we think they are effective in the way we do. Uh, uh, we work with children, with elders, with other categories of risk. Um, and I think, um, um, and we are always open to new ways of solving the uh, needs of communities and of vulnerable groups particularly. We focus on people and we focus on how different mechanisms and how uh, institutions and laws and um, practices uh, solve the needs of vulnerable people or actually how uh, they create vulnerabilities. Um, we think that uh, we notice in our work that in sometimes um, um, uh, you, fo you need to focus on individuals or small groups or smaller communities within a city. In other situations, you need to, fo to step back, want to take one step back and um, to, to, to focus on training professionals in order to achieve a, a much stronger uh, effect. Uh, so it, sometimes you start from the grass up and in other situations you start from the top uh, and focus uh, and produce effects on uh, groups uh, in, uh, in on individuals or groups. Um, so um, I'm going to try and share my screen. Okay. Um, Okay. Oh, they changed the system. Okay. Um, in the last, uh, do you do you see the PowerPoint presentation? Perfect. Yes. Can you see it? Okay. Uh, in the last uh, twenty years, we've been focusing. Part of our work focuses on the effects of migration of different target groups. We focus on children, Romanian children, whose parents um, uh, went abroad to work. We uh, first learned about these children at risk from professionals who notified us about these children in, uh, in the, with using negative examples. We have a group of children who are troublemakers, who have low performances in school. Um, they commit crimes or petty cr crimes or they have a uh, pre-delinquent behavior. We have a problem with these children, and we need to to provide to help us provide services or help us out in general because uh, these professionals knew that we work with children at risk. Uh, we did not know who these children were, and we first started with a with a with a learning phase, um, and we did uh, some smaller size researches and then some uh, national size researches in order to determine who these children are and um, what are the, the issues that they're faced with 
and who are the parents that are choosing to, to go and work abroad to see whether we can we can we can um, improve those processes in, in order to have less uh, um, lesser effect on the children left at home. We learned that in actuality the children that were seen by the, the professionals who initially contacted us were actually part, a small part of these children, and that the majority of these children have had the issues, but they are not creating problems themselves. So not all children with parents working abroad were actually problem children, children creating problems to the school system or to the juveniles, to the, to the local authorities in one way or another. Uh, but in actuality, they, suff they were suffering themselves, and they, in many situations, they were invisible. Teachers did not see them, they were not known. Most of these children were not known. So um, we started from uh, a discussion with, with other professors. We deepen, deepened uh, the knowledge uh, of the situation of these children. Of these children. Um, we proposed, we started providing services. We, we learned more about how to work with these children and their families. And uh, we uh, share this experience with other professionals in other con contexts. Um, so this is one category of children affected by labor by migration in general that we work with. We also work with victims of trafficking in persons. We also work with nationals coming over to Romania. We work with elders whose children went and worked abroad. Uh, when we, we learned a lot about um, uh, um, the situations of adults, older adults whose children who went abroad and left them behind and um, were in need of assistance. So we different types of vulnerable groups, uh, interventions that we shared with, uh, with the other professionals. Um, so uh, we focus a lot on migration. We try to learn about what drives migration, what are the risks associated with migration, what it is that professionals can do in order to be um, effective at uh, um, reducing. We and this is part of our work. We focus a lot on migration, but we also work with other types of children at risk children with parents in prison, children of divorce, children from residential care. These are different groups of children at risk, and we try to uh, basically use the same uh, approach every time. We learn as much as we can from a theoretical standpoint, from a practical standpoint, by providing direct services. We try to develop, develop tools and um, uh, approaches, methodologies for working with these groups so that other professionals don't need to go through the, the motions of, of, of developing their own interventions. They can use an, a verified approach to providing direct uh, significant effects on, in, in, on uh, reducing the vulnerability. So this is the, we also work with other uh, on other topics. Uh, we, we work for the reform of the of the justice system in Romania, um, including the juvenile court system. We focus a lot on children, but we also work with the parents of of, uh, of children who are in prison um, and help their reintegration in the community. Uh, we train prof uh, magistrates, judges, prosecutors who work with juvenile. Uh, offenders or victims, we try to improve their procedures and uh, processes so that they uh, improve their communication with the general public. Uh, they are more uh, transparent and more uh, less likely to be considered corrupt in cases where there is no corruption, but just a, a, a thickness in a, in a way in which they communicate that uh, is not helpful to the great the big public. So we, we try to, to uh, improve the communication or the transparency of the court systems uh, by providing them with skills on how to communicate their messages to the general public. Um, we also focus, as again, uh, as I said before, on victims of trafficking, and this is a big field uh, uh, that we work in. Uh, we work with victims of trafficking that are Romanian. We also work with victims of trafficking that are 
uh, third country nationals or foreign nationals going through Romania to Western Europe. Um, and we uh, try to improve the collaboration between different systems, um, working with professionals to develop, uh, to understand what the needs of different institutions are, what the needs of different professionals are, what the needs of migrants or victims are that are not being accommodated by professionals and so that we provide the proper training or the changes in the law uh, or the, the changes in the attitude of, uh, of institutions who do not see themselves as having a role in working with a specific target group. Um, and one example is uh, uh, a project that we when we try to put to bring to the table professionals from different institutions that do not work directly with migrants, in many situations they we were told that we don't work with migrants. I'm a doctor. I don't work with migrants, uh, or uh, I'm a social worker and I work with people from uh, uh, this rural area of Romania. I will never meet a migrant, or I never met a migrant. I don't understand why it, is, why it is that I need to know about the violence and migration. Um, so we try to, to, to provide professionals with an understanding of how migration works in general, how migration works in relation to Romania, how, uh, you know, to, to try, and, try and get them to see past their, the work that they do currently, to see, uh, um, to, to, to see that, you know, to understand the, part of Romania or better yet to understand uh, the place of Romania in the European Union and how migration works in, on, on a broader uh, scale and uh, to, to, to basically provide them with, with skills and knowledge that they may use should uh, ch things change, so should the reality that they work in change. And um, I basically we finished this project earlier this year, uh, earlier uh, actually in March or May uh, last year and after that uh, in Romania we started having large numbers of migrants coming over to or through Romania uh, which turned you know the, the whole situation changed the, the situation considerably for some of these professionals who told us that they don't need information additional information working with migrants uh, um, now they were actually facing groups of migrants coming over through Romania because somewhere in Europe, some 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 push pull factor uh, changed the entire phenomenon for Western Romania. Um, so again, we try to five practices and approaches, and we try to pass them on to other professionals. Um, and we do, as I said. Uh, we do studies, researches, direct assistance, and then we put that into methodologies and train professionals. The, the, the pro current project, the CCCP project, actually uh, fits very, very well with the type of work that we do because it, uh, it, is, uh, it focuses a lot on using local resources on, uh, and activating stakeholders. Um, I think um, we, uh, as an organization, focus a lot on either working with individuals or working with small groups uh, or work a lot from, from a very broad, uh, uh, on a level that is far from the, 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 the actual individual. We don't have anything in between or we didn't have up until this project. I think one thing that um, uh, uh, this project did to us was to, um, for, for us, was to um, uh, kind of, um, how to put it, we, we changed a lot uh, the distance, let's say, if you are from a, from a zoom in, zoom out, we, we uh, focus now, or we started thinking about the specifics of smaller communities, of uh, how communities can help themselves. Um, and I think this is, uh, this is something that we gain in this project. Um, and we try to put that into the local action plans and, and to actually to, to see whether that would work 
with our target group for the local labs and see whether we can put that into local action, uh, local action um, plans. Um, okay. Um, the local labs, um, as I said yesterday, we focused on, uh, we, we tried to make them as practical as possible. Our target group uh, of participants to the, to the local labs were social workers um, or people starting to become social workers. Um, in Romania, um, in Romania we, we still need uh, uh, good social workers, we need professional social workers. Many of the social workers that work in smaller communities are unqualified still. There is a recent study done by the National College of Social Workers which says, which, which points out that uh, over half of the um, social workers working in smaller communities, they are not, they're not qualified social workers. And the social workers that go to university and complete this, their studies are very inexperienced. Uh, they, they don't uh, know, um, uh, they, they only know theoretical, uh, the theory of their work. They don't, don't have, they're not connected with practice. They're not connected with other professionals. They're not connected. They don't un necessarily understand very well social phenomena and how they affect communities. So when they go and work in the smaller communities, they are very either focused a lot on uh, on uh, the things that you know are very uh, um, let's say providing very very cold and distant from their their, their uh, from from the vulnerable groups they um, they are not they are very rigid they don't understand their beneficiaries uh, and they don't uh, um, they are not trained to think in an adaptive way so that their interventions fit the needs of the communities and that their interventions are supported by local stakeholders so there they there is a need for a, a contact or, and for a, for an, um, there is a need for social workers who graduate university to, to graduate university with an understanding of, of how the the different vulnerable groups uh, can be supported by using community resources. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be a bit more specific. I think I'm I'm <laughs> I need to be more specific. Uh, we selected students and social workers who are have an interest in working with with um, vulnerable groups associated with the phenomenon of migration as i said before we find that migration affects families in in many ways there are many uh, groups of uh, of romanian citizens or other uh, foreigners coming over to romania or going through romania that uh, need assistance, need support, and they don't receive it because they are not acknowledged uh, as vulnerable. Um, up, up until recently, children with parents working abroad, separated from their parents working abroad, were not acknowledged as a, uh, acknowledged as a group of, at risk. Um, and uh, social workers would not focus on their situations, would not uh, record their situation, would not uh, intervene would not uh, provide them with the needed support because they they were not among the uh, groups at risk uh, same with migrants Romanians were not Romanians is not confronted with significant migration or what was not up until years a few years ago so uh, migration and all of its uh, facets and all and the way you know migrants and uh, migration as a phenomenon is not very well known to professionals professionals in Romania if they don't they don't work in um, specialized institutions like the border police or uh, in in uh, immigration uh, they don't they don't have skills they don't understand how migration works and uh, the experience of migrants uh, so um, in general, we, we don't, as, as, as professionals, process that kind of information and not prepared to uh, accommodate the needs of people affected by migration. Uh, I think the, probably the, the, the first contact with migration that most 
professionals in, in Romania had um, so in the, the most significant group of people affected by migration are is represented by children with parents working abroad. Um, but as I said before, there are many other groups and we wanted to present these groups to the, the participants to the local labs to uh, present them with the statistics, the theory, the tools that we use and practical experiences that we use and put, make them aware of the, the legal context in which that is uh, available in Romania, the institutions, resources. Uh, so we, we try to aim to provide the participants to the local labs with, with as much information on uh, all of these subjects uh, and to provide them with the opportunity of talking to professionals that actually do work with these target groups. Um, and then uh, we wanted to, um, we, we told them from the beginning that we, they will have to create these action plans um, and uh, that was kind of intimidating because they are, as I said, very inexperienced and they were, they were supposed to put themselves in, in the context of, uh, of a practical application and we, want, we, we encouraged them to think that of themselves as social workers that they need to go to work tomorrow and implement the plan. Um, as a, as a, um, uh, the, the design of the local labs included this initial presentation where we would explain, we would take a group, a, a specific group of vulnerable people, like the children with parents working abroad, and we would present them with the theory, with the tools, and with our experiences and uh, our view of uh, of the different uh, interventions that, that social workers and psychologists can do. Uh, and then they would have the opportunity to ask questions and ex express their fears about them being or not being able to, um, to uh, do their work basically as social workers. And we would do some, a little bit of encouragement as well. Uh, but the end result was that they, we, were, we presented them with options. Basically, at the end of the course, they had to choose one group and one community, uh, and a community that we that they were accustomed to, that they knew well. And we went through a reconnaissance phase where they would have to go to their community and see what kind of what type of groups affected by migration are represented in that particular community. And um, uh, then they would they would um, uh, have to do a little bit of research on about the community, about stakeholders, about resources, about issues that they might encounter that would block their intervention, but also opportunities, uh, institutional or uh, other types of resources that they could use as social workers in their those communities. I think this is this is something that you cannot get in university. In university, you get a lot of theory and a lot of um, uh, legal presentations, a lot, uh, presentation about the legal framework, or uh, uh, the, the public institutions that are the theoretically supposed to do uh, to, to to fulfill certain roles, uh, but they you don't get the actual work. Of, you don't get you, you only get the little bit of uh, what the actual work of the social worker is, uh, worker is uh, in community when going to the smaller community when having to uh, deal with the mayor and having to deal with religion and having to do with um, with with the, uh, um, the, uh, the different aspects of the different uh, you know the, the life uh, with with the good and the bad of, of the specific community um so uh we, we try to to give them as much information about uh this the, the the main situations that they might encounter when applying uh uh a plan um so it, this is what it looked like uh oh okay uh, 
a short intervention, please, if uh, sure. possible. Uh, so the the idea is that um, as an NGO, I think we have um, we have the advantage of flexibility of um, doing uh, of identifying some needs, some uh, problems in the community, and coming up with uh, creative solutions. And through the fact that most of us, as um, most of our colleagues uh, started their activity within the organization as volunteers, most of us learned through action. So uh, it's very important for us as an organization to put a lot of uh, interest and a lot of effort to learn from action, from being there in the community, from uh, discussing with our beneficiaries and coming with the solutions also uh, inspired by their own by their personal view on their own situation. So this is also what we try to do in our um, um, in our local lab. Since um, <laughs> I mean, we also started from from this in our training, our professional training, and it's very very important. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. One thing that um, we probably not just as in Romania but elsewhere is that the university is not providing uh, future professionals with enough hands-on experience. And one, I think, one of the main uh, focuses of our local action, or local labs, was to provide that kind of experience. Unfortunately, it, we were limited in in our attempt by the pandemic. We could not take them on the field with us. We could not get them to meet families and talk and hear them speak of, um, of specific situations in their community. But we did, what, what we managed to do at least a little bit was uh, to connect them with that kind of experience when we told them about our cases and about uh, the communities that we work in and about the main barriers that we meet in communities and uh, main opportunities that you meet as well, um, that you can use to, to help a group or a person or, or the entire community. Um, and we gave them a lot of examples. We had some testimonies, recorded testimonies of, of, uh, of beneficiaries who would, uh, who were, who used, who was, who were very helpful. Um, but something which is very important, um, we try to, uh, to, we try to get um, the, the um, participants to, understand not just the effects of different phenomena on the vulnerable, vulnerable groups, but also the causes. Um, and uh, if you speak with, with parents who separated from their parents, they would always say that they had, in their community, they did not have enough opportunities to be able to stay with their, with their children, but to also to be able to uh, provide for their children with different, with, with, with the resources uh, to stay in school, to go to a better school, to stay in, in better living conditions. So the community was not supportive for them. Not just the small community that they left, but also the, 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 on national level. They, they felt like there were not enough opportunities for them in the country. So one thing to consider is that they were disappointed with, with the opportunity, opportunities that they had. But immediately you have a question, you know, uh, why is it that some people do find those opportunities in the country? Why it is that not all of us are going to work abroad in Italy, Spain, you know, UK? Um, and there is, there, is, there is some truth in what they say, but there is also a lack of skills that they have. Many of the parents who work abroad, they changed one plan, their, their initial plan to stay at home with another plan to go abroad, but they did not uh, do a thorough analysis of the options that they had. Well, they also did not do a thorough analysis of the risks that they're taking. Uh, um, so going back to what the, the, the social worker is supposed to do is, the social worker is supposed to be knowledgeable of what the, the, the community is like, what the resources are available. Who are the influencers in the community? What are the resources in the community? What are the migration patterns? Why do people leave? Who are the people that are leaving to, uh, to work abroad? Um, and, and then we do, it, 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 it is a very complex issue. 
um, uh, and in some situations you are able to talk to somebody as a social worker to somebody in the mayor's office and see whether it is that they can do you know to provide more opportunities or to uh, alleviate some of the effects of separation on children so that one while parents still do choose to go and work abroad they can achieve their goals faster because they know that their children are safe at home so uh, it, it's a very complex phenomenon we try to uh, emphasize the need for the participants to go and learn as much pos as possible about the community not just focus on the the the, the, the institutions although they are very important they should be involved but they to open their mind to other approaches uh, and to other stakeholders and resources that uh, can help them uh, reduce the vulnerability of, of, of uh, different groups initially we proposed uh, we, we described our work with different groups we proposed that they they could select any of the groups that we presented to do this local action on local action plan on uh, but everybody focused on eventually on on children separated from parents uh, working abroad. Um, I think it has to do with the fact that uh, it's something which is very still a, a strong subject in Romania. It's still a, we have still we still have hundreds of thousands of children children with one or both parents working abroad. We still have a strong migration in and out of Romania, people working, going and coming uh, uh, back to Romania. So this is a very uh, much alive phenomenon. So it's very familiar since we have so many children. Um, I think all of the participants had a, a relative or a, somebody, they knew at least somebody in this phenomenon. So it's very personal. But it has to be personal also. Although it's personal, it also as a social worker, social worker, you need to be practical. So we again um, started. Uh, we told them of, from the very beginning that we would have a local action plan to develop on a specific community, and we initially told them, based on on our plan, on the local action plan structure, that they would have to have a plan that has a local context analysis, uh, stakeholder mapping. They would have to focus on uh, local actors. They would have to gather information if possible by direct interaction with the main actors. Um, they would have to identify the main issues, objectives or changes they want to achieve, plans to plan actions and ex execution timeline. And also there would, would have to be a monitoring phase. Um, we made yeah. it a bit Alex, more specific. Could yep. Could I ask you a quick question? Sure. Um, because it's, it's something I've been struggling with also when you explained Alternative Sociale previously, and it's because uh, I don't know the, the Romanian context at all. So I'm always wondering, is what you do, is that um, contentious or polemic? Polemic, do people, um, how to put it, um, does it become political quickly, or is your main task really relief and providing relief for the young people you work with through training social workers proper, properly? Um, it, it, well, it's somewhat political. Uh, it's not. It's a bit of both, <laughs> I think. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think it's, it's that political. I don't think it's a, it's an issue that has been taken over by politicians and made into something which is not. I think there is a lot of, it has a lot to do with um, how Romania, how quick Romania is willing to introduce. To, to look at vulnerability of different groups and how quickly Romanian institutions are willing to um, to uh, do something about it. So uh, um, in Romania, we first learned about the situation of these children in 2003, 2004, and it took about a decade for national authorities to do something strongly and decisively to help these target groups. But and this, oh, yeah, uh, sorry, and I for, think for, that. Sorry, Alex, just just a second. In 2003 and 2004, uh, we actually were working for um, teaching professionals how to work with children with delinquent or pre-delinquent behaviors. And working with them, they started 
coming with us with different cases of children which were in attention of police departments or in schools uh, and so on and so forth. And we identify that a common uh, issue and all these children is having one of, or both parents abroad. So dealing with other sorts of problems, we identify a new problem. So it's a kind of uh, cycle uh, thing that we, we, we did, not necessarily intentionally, but it seems that working with these type of a uh, certain type of uh, uh, beneficiaries you identify other problems which if you see that it comes from different stakeholders and different contexts it means that it, you might have a new phenomenon and we start dealing and researching that it's and coming with new projects new solutions and dealing with this in uh, during all these processes we try to uh, help as much the institutions uh, meaning that we create methodologies, we create studies, we create recommendations, uh, proposals for improving the legislation, everything that we need, we think that is necessarily for solving that problem. But this, this has to do with two things, two systemic aspects of how Romanian Romania uh, works. <laughs> One, we th there is a lag, there is a latency there is a, a uh, there is it takes a lot for uh, national authorities to acknowledge uh, that there is a, 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 a significant vulnerable group uh, or any vulnerable group, any new vulnerable new group of vulnerable people it takes a while for them to be acknowledged and to, for and, and to be uh, uh, for, for for the government to react or the central institutions to react it usually it's the, the local communities who take care of their own uh, and if that occurs. And then after a while, about a decade in our experience, it, it, the central authorities, regardless of what you do and the national the, the advocacy efforts, and it takes a long time for the central authorities to acknowledge that certain vulnerable groups need support. And then there is a systemic issues with social services. Social services in in in, uh, in Romania, in the rural areas especially, are not being provided by professionals. Even though the legislation says says that you know every um, village should have or a commune, which is a slightly slightly larger structure uh, uh, community, uh, they should have professionals. They still haven't been able to do that. Social workers don't go and work in villages. So you need to go uh, every time you, you need, you, you've noticed that there is a phenomenon, there is a vulnerable group uh, of people that smaller communities need to work with or work for. Uh, you need to do and train social workers and basically convince social workers that they do need to identify children separated from their parents that they do need to identify children with parents in prison uh, and that you they do need to work with parents who have been in prison and return to their community and um, they need support you know from be, to be to be able to uh, not go back to their old ways so th there are two main issues one is how fast uh, relevant institutions identify new groups and then there is the issue of professional uh, social services which need to be developed and this is why we go back to training social workers on uh, how they can work in communities how to uh, because there is no, the third issue is that smaller communities don't have resources so it's they have to go to creative approaches they have to go to uh to 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 collaborate with ngos so there are ways in which they can achieve their mission but they have to acknowledge that they have a problem they have to have the will to support their uh the the the, the population that needs support and um, they need ways they need to to, to 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 acquire ways on how to do that effectively so this is why we wanted to uh train social workers or future social workers quickly effectively on how to work with groups affected by migration because if they go to their communities and they are get stuck into doing bureaucracy 
they will never or they will have little chance of you know getting this kind of experience uh, and uh, actually implement this type of approaches focused using uh, uh, theoretical knowledge legislation but also the local context favorable context while understanding that there might be hardships and there might be barriers so I hope that that answers your that answers your question mm -hmm. but yes thanks very much again there is a we, we our 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 approach is that we need to learn we need to uh, take that knowledge into effective methodologies or tools and uh, steps on how that a group can be effectively uh, supported uh, and then we pass that knowledge on to our colleagues um, so our we, we stuck with the we stuck we we we, we followed the initial the local action plan as it was designed in the, in the project but then we we made it a bit more specific for our um, for our uh, participants um, and this is Romanian <laughs> but I'm gonna read it to you <laughs> so uh, and I'm gonna translate if you want the presentation basically uh, we start we, we kept the same uh, the same uh, initial plan uh, Right. Local context, stakeholder mapping, identification of issues, objectives or changes you want to achieve, plans of actions, execution timeline, and monitoring. We we kind of change a little bit, uh, and the, this initial plan. And basically, we had three stages: a, st a stage of reconnaissance, as we called it in the last presentations, where they would have to actually see, you know. Uh, um, learn as much as they actually we, we initially separated the participants into three groups each group had to come up with a local action plan. but there would have to be a local action plan about a specific community that they knew well uh, and it, it, it would have to be a, a very pliable plan in order for that to be possible they would have to see where that to, to locate to localize that community uh, they would have to you know on the map they would have to uh, describe how far that small community is from a major city, what kind of, uh, how, how, whether that is accessible, the community is accessible. Uh, to describe the population in terms of uh, ethnic, uh, uh, if, you know, to, just to see whether there is some relevance from the ethnic, or the, ethnic or the religious, or other types of, of, of um, factors, whether those are relevant. Uh, they would have to learn about the existing social services or medical educational social services systems, uh, both public and private. They would have to uh, map other uh, relevant community resources. They would have to identify types of needs that the community is facing, like uh, unemployment or poverty or um, uh, high migration. They would have to identify the main vulnerable groups. So they would have to know as much as possible about that particular community. Then they would have to select uh, a group, a target group, because as a social worker you have to be aware of the fact that you can only that you cannot do everything, uh, or you cannot do everything at once at the same time. So they would have to focus in their plan on a specific target group. Uh, they would have to describe that group in terms of uh, number, age. Uh, access to services, uh, other types of problems, specific problems that that particular group has in the community. Um, they would have to then select to decide whether they would they would want to focus on all these problems or on all the problems that they, the, 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 the group are, is faced with or on a specific or several specific issues uh, that they would focus on solving through the local action plan. And then they would have to uh, take these the selected problems and put them through the local action uh, plan matrix, which is a, the exact uh, same as the one that we we uh, produced uh, in the project. Um, and this is what we did actually. Uh, and I'm going to show you what one one of these plans looks like. Um, Up, up, up. 
there it is. So we came up, come, came up with, uh, with quite a sizable document. <laughs> it was even larger uh, uh, when we initially received it. It's in Romania because it's, it was done in Romanian by our uh, colleagues, well, from our participants. Um, so this is a, a, one of the actual plans that we, we, we came up with. It's, it's, an actual, it's an action plan on providing protection to children with parents working abroad from one of the communes which is close to Yash and which is, which is uh, special in the fact that there is a high percentage of Roma uh, citizens. So there is, a, there, that, there is that specific compared to other communities. And this is, we, we, as you can see, we, then we started with the localization. We, we as, as we said before, it, it, the commune is close in the south of the, of the county, is very close to the Yash city, um, has a population of over 10,000 inhabitants. Uh, with a significant number of children, uh, children uh, uh, separated from their parents uh, working abroad, they do have uh, public social uh, social services. They have day centers, daycare centers. They have um, 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 they have a pretty uh, good uh, system of social. Uh, of institutions providing different ser social services, but we didn't just focus on on uh, on social institutions that provide social services. We also focused on institutions that provide education uh, uh, support to these to, to children uh, to vulnerable children. We focused a lot on uh, the access to medical aid for for these families. Um, And we also focused on uh, um, on whether there are other resources, other community relevant resources, and the teams identified the public library uh, and, a, and a cultural center that that does uh, activities with uh, or could be involved in some uh, type of either prevention or direct uh, support services to children uh, at risk or their parents and could uh, do um, public information and sensitization activities. So they can be a resource in that respect. Also, there are some cultural uh, NGOs uh, that they can also be become a, a local resource and the local church. Uh, the main difficulties that the communities are confronted with is uh, poverty, high unemployment and migration. Uh, the main vulnerable groups are uh, Roma ethnics, uh, but also Roma children whose parents are working abroad. So these are, aside from the fact that they belong to a minority which is at risk, uh, they also overlap with the fact that these are children who, uh, whose parents are abroad. Single, fa single parent families, uh, children at risk of abandoning school, children left at home in the care of uh, elders, of, of elders, brothers or sisters, or grandparents. Uh, so we, we go through, we went, they, the, the team actually went ahead and justified uh, why they selected uh, children at risk from, because of their separation from parents working abroad. And that is a, is a uh, quite a thorough description of what these children, children go through um, and uh, some of the effects that they will that the plan is going to focus on effects of separation that the plan is going to focus on um, again some statistical data specific statistical data on the community um, just to be able to uh, to establish the size of the target group for this plan. Uh, there is a, a list of, of uh, the needs that uh, the plan is going gonna, is gonna to focus on. So we, we, our team, I, we have to praise them for doing quite a, quite a, 
thorough analysis of the situation of these children uh, and describing the needs and what needs to be done in order for them to be to be um, more re to become more resilient. Um, and this is the plan. The plan uh, focuses on three problems. Uh, one uh, is uh, the fact that the children with separated from their parents develop difficulties uh, or have difficulties uh, in maintaining a good, a proper relationship with their parents but also with other members of the community that they're part of. Um, the second problem is the fact that they, since uh, in some of them uh, have uh, insufficient life skills in order to cope with, uh, with future uh, challenges, uh, both as a child, but specifically in the long run as adults, so they, they, they don't have somebody to teach them these independent life skills because either they are left in the care of older brothers and sisters who themselves don't have those skills or the people that they're left uh, uh, that they are looking after them they are not necessarily models so they're not necessarily the, they're not properly replacing the parents while the the, the the children are separated from their parents and the last problem, they have issues with expressing and managing emotions. Uh, and we, the, the plan focuses on 20 to 30 children from a specific school in the community, uh, uh, children separated from, from, uh, from their parents. And of course, for each, for each problem, we, we design, we, we think of, of uh, we try to, to, to imagine what the change is going to, with, what the change needs to look like. Uh, to, we designed, uh, or the team designed uh, smart objectives, specific activities in the school. Um, we try aiming to get the, the um, teachers more involved to, um, train teachers on how to cope with the issues that they see um, uh, in the children, um, to get parents in the case of uh, when parents are, one of the parents is abroad but the other is still at home or the caregiver, uh, um, to make them aware of what the child is going through and make them aware of the fact that they need to, to, to accommodate, they need of the child to establish a good relationship with the parents abroad. Um, so we, we have, do have specific activities for each of these problems. We we have uh, we we in our plan we include a specific organization or or professional or person resources person in the in the community that needs to be involved. Uh, uh, we have a schedule, we have, uh, or the team has um, uh, identified needed resources, uh, possible uh, barriers, and expected results. So, um, again, in our uh, local labs, we, we, we try to, to be as uh, practical as possible, we try to focus to, to tailor these plans to the specific of the community as much as possible to take into account the fact that uh, not two communities are alike but uh, all these communities would have to uh, to solve issues of children working abroad which are not ethnic specific or geographically specific but uh, are, are uh, um, the same for all the children with parents abroad regardless of, uh, of the money that they have. Money is just another, uh, it, it may be uh, an issue, but uh, um, most children who are separated from their parents have other, type of, other types of needs which are related to the stage of life that they're in, um, which has to have to do with their emotional development, which has to do with certain skills that they need to acquire that are being taught by parents or responsible adults around the children um, and they one of those uh, skills 
uh, is the, or the ability is to ability to ask for help. So uh, I, I've been working in, in the social field for 20 years now. Uh, I started as a social worker and I, I'm still a social worker and I still go out in the field and meet families. And I noticed that compared to 20 years ago, families are, families are much more reluctant of going to social services or asking for help in general because they think that uh, and that's happening more and more. Um, once the, uh, they, they, they are afraid that the, the separation is maybe a cause for uh, children to be taken away from the family. So if you go and talk to a family, one of the fears that immediately, immediately emerges is that, they, is that social services will take away the children. Um, so talk to us and the participants to the local labs have the opportunity to talk to professionals who actually do this kind of work, then get much better results in, in achieving a good collaboration with the families and children because they know that this is a primal, this is a, one of the fears that they have and they can dismantle or uh, alleviate those fears quickly. So and this is a type of practical uh, abilities related to a specific situations that we, we try to pass on to the participants to the local labs. They need to have a plan which, is, which takes into account uh, the specifics of the community, working with this kind of, with this target group in the, in the Romanian context. So we put a lot of, uh, put a, we put a lot of emphasis on practical, on real life, on community tailored uh, local action plans. Uh, I don't know whether I, I made uh, too much sense. Uh, if you have, uh, if you have other questions. Uh, yes, maybe I yes. missed it, and I apologize if I make you repeat something. But um, you said you the pandemic, of course, affected the local labs, and you did most of most of it without going out to the community. If I understood well, so right. what what would have would have been different if not the pandemic what what kind of actions maybe uh, or did you have to reframe or rethink or which ones would you rethink now after the pandemic and how would you do it to get this yeah um, you know um, one thing that we do with our colleagues as social workers, we do two things. One, we go with them in the field. So they would, they would, we would work in pairs, at least in pairs, if not two or three social, if not uh, three social workers. Uh, we'd go to cases, they would see us ask questions, they would see us react, they would see us uh, uh, adapt, adjust to the situation in the particular community. So that is learned, is very, is, is very, is very important because it, it, it's real life. You know, they, we had a, a, one of the girls, a social, social worker, we were discussing about victims of violence, migrant victims of violence in the, in the local lab. And she, they would say, mm, okay, I understand the approach. But then she says, you know, I have a neighbor and she's, uh, she, I think she's the victim of violence, but I'm afraid to report. You know, what should I do? So we talked to them about the fear of reporting. We talked to them about their not being a citizen who's afraid, but a social worker which has uh, uh, a legal framework behind them, an institution behind them, uh, they, they have a duty, a responsibility. So you know that kind of interaction uh, usually happens when we when they see us react in those situations. Or uh, and in that, the other situation that we, we, we do with young social workers, with new social workers, is that we have a weekly meeting where we discuss cases. And then they would say, you know, this uh, lady, she told me that and I answered that, but I'm afraid I upset her. Or I'm afraid that she, she's going to be less collaborative because... And then we say, okay, you can do this or you can change that. Or we can alleviate their fears by saying, no, actually, what you did was not to scare them off. But we did. You, you 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 provided them with an information which is harsh, but it's true. So they, that may actually reinforce your 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 relationship with that lady because you were true to her. So we provide them with fact. We we 
we, we provide them with practical experience because we take them in the field, but then we discuss specific cases and specific situations and we reinforce their instincts or provide them additional, with additional information. So it's very helpful. This is what we would have done had it, had it not been for the pandemic. We'd have taken them with us to the, to, to the families. We'd have invited them over to our office to have these kind of meetings and discuss specific cases. But we did that to some extent because when we explained uh, certain reactions of families, we would go to a specific case and we would say, you know, oh, we actually had a case where this lady did that and the family and the child. And we come up with a lots of practical examples. And we also had the opportunity of recording some of our uh, uh, beneficiaries. And then we would play those recordings and they would speak of their fears. And for instance, with, with a child who, was, uh, who, who, who migrated over to Italy, and she, she actually, I think she was one year old when she went, went over to Italy and she returned when she was eight. So all her life, all her, you know, all, all her life was basically in Italy. She knew little of Romania. But she spoke Romanian, she had a good connection with the Romanian community there, so she, she was very, in that respect, she, 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 she had some good things working for her. When we, when we asked her about, you know, what's it like to be in Romania, well, how do you feel about coming over to Romania, the girl said, actually, I'm very scared because I'm starting a, a new life, I'm starting my life again. So we and we, we had that on camera, and that is very powerful when you show her that to the to the participants, and you say, okay, this is the, 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 the what they go through. It's not just the list of bullets, of bullet points. It, it's you know that kind of experience. So, but again, uh, it's very important to be able to as a social worker and as a professional to 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 have an intervention that is relevant to the target group, but also to the community. And uh, this is why, why in, uh, we have encounters with social workers a lot, with social workers from smaller communities who stay in their office, who uh, do who, the least that they have to do, the, the minimum that they have to do based on, on the legislation. And it's us coming over from an NGO that, which is based in another place, coming over to their community and tell them, you know, you actually have a school that reported 25 children with separated from their parents that you don't know about. Uh, or go to them and say, okay, if you do this part of the job, we'll do this part of the job. We have a psychologist who will come over to the school and have a... So uh, this is why it, this project is relevant to us because we, it creates the opportunity for us to prepare our trainees to think of the community, to tailor their intervention on the specific community and to provide them with some real reality. And sorry, just a short more intervention. <laughs> uh, besides going on the field with the, um, uh, to, to our beneficiaries, we would definitely uh, would have included them in our discussions with other professionals from other institutions, just to see their thinking, their reactions, their um problems maybe they didn't intervene properly because they had some limitations due to procedures due to i don't know budget so um actually our um our trainees and our volunteers are all, we treat them as our colleagues and they're part of our team uh when we go on the field and go uh, solving cases next to them so would, of course, this pandemic affected also the, our number of beneficiaries. We have less uh, less cases, less requests than before, and definitely this this uh, local lab should would have included more, many more other I don't know actions in in the field. In the community. And something else, yeah, just to add to what then I was saying. Some, one thing that we would have done, we would have sent them over to the local stakeholders and the local institutions to talk to them directly, which we were not able to do because they had many of them had so many rules, like the daycare centers. They would not allow you to go there because they hardly are able to work with the children. They don't have somebody coming from outside. They don't need. They don't they welcome somebody coming from outside to to enter to 
create more problems. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, that's another thing that did not happen. It would have happened. Thank you. Okay. So if you don't have, uh, do you have any other uh, questions related to our? Because if not, we have another presentations re presentation related to the qualifications and certification. <laughs> and, uh, I just um, want to ask. Um, maybe you dealt before in some way. Uh, how did they find uh, the action or plan approach, the social work for the real uh, work? I mean, uh, useful, applicable, or too much theoretical? Or they find? Uh, uh, no, I mean, not only in the training. I'm curious. Taking in consideration the the, um, the drafts of the local action plans that we received, I think they were very well received, and they were. Uh, we also include in our in our uh, activity um, the um, the fact that we want these plans these plans to be. Um, cursive to be current to go from the macro vision on the community to the specific problems and how to be solved and um the structure that we we came up with i think was uh, well received so and i think it we all were we all we were also very inspired in the selection process of the participants because we contacted the university and we asked them uh, we we asked them to put a notice on their Facebook and in, on their community internal com of the communication systems with the students. Uh, so the participants were 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 already motivated to be part of the, the of this training of the labs. Um, and I think we were also lucky to get very good students uh, compared to other situations where you would have to push them to you know because social workers hate to do paperwork, but it's the actually very important part of their work, which is a paradox. But the, the students we had were very much uh, interested in how relevant it is that what it is that they need to put on paper. Well, is that relevant? Do, do I need that kind of information in my uh, profession? And we explained every step and we said, this is what this is important. This is the relevance of this part. This is why you need uh, to define a problem properly. And we actually had the back and forth on the definition of the problem. If you don't define the problem, if you define it too specific, or you don't define it specifically enough, or if you don't define it as a problem, we had an, this is an issue, actual issue that we had. Uh, they would uh, think of a solution, and instead of writing down a problem, they would define it as a, as a solution. And we would have to send them back, you know, what it is that is the problem, what it is that is not working for these children what it is that you need to solve. So we, we had a good uh, grind, we had a good um, uh, process of re refining uh, the different uh, parts of the plan. So they understood the need for, for the different parts, but it wasn't an issue. The, the, the fact that they had to go through all the, the parts for our students wasn't an issue. It was more of a, how do you fill the, the local action plan in a, in a, in a way that is, is it becomes a, a, a good tool. How do you do, do you fill it in in order to be helpful? Okay, great. Okay, other questions? If not, I think we can move on to the qualification presentations. Qualifications presentation that Dana is gonna be doing. Yes. I'm gonna help out. No, so Need it. get the, uh, the clock. So let me see if I know how to share. Uh, first of all, I would like to excuse myself for the uh, for the eventuality of the um, my internet connection coming down. Uh, I don't know if you see the presentation. Okay. 
Yes, fine. Okay, thank you. So, um, in this project, as you know, we had the, the role of um, identifying ways of um, certification and, uh, and transfer of qualification. Uh, I would to start very briefly with a short introduction to some theoretical, very briefly, aspects, because uh, this is also what we had to do when we started uh, our research on this. And as you already know, certification and transfer of qualifications are related to three aspects, learning, education, and training. Uh, just to also to have make sure that you already set uh, on the right track. As you know, learning is an ongoing process. Um, it's active, it builds on prior knowledge, um, and actually it's ongoing since we were born. We are starting to learn how to walk, how to talk, how to eat. So learning means a lot of um, a lot of um, aspects that we um, we get through our experiences, and of course, learning is facilitated by education and training, which are more structured and um, processes. For example, education, as you know, is an acquisition of knowledge, meaning facts, concepts, and theories, and you can say that it's a process, but it's systematic of receiving or giving instruction and learning. While training can be a smaller part of education, a, more, a smaller area of education, uh, meaning that it is an action of teaching, of learning a skill or behavior, and it helps how to, to teach you how to apply facts, concepts, and theories. Um, very important when talking about qualification and certification within the European Union, we need to be very clear that training can be formal, which means going through an organized program or held by a certified trainer institutions. As you know, not anyone can, uh, if you want to have recognition, you need to have a certified recognition of your knowledge of your uh, um, um, learning, non-formal learning, non-formal training and informal training, although similar, are different through the fact that while non-formal learning um, are structured uh, programs like this one that we are in, uh, you can have these activities made at or your job, or you can go to certain classes for example, taking dancing classes or uh, cooking lessons or everything. Th these are non-formal trainings. And you also have informal training, which is not institutionalized, it's not structured and not intentional. While, uh, I don't know, doing uh, certain activities, you start um, learning new things, how to operate certain, uh, I don't know, computers or how to install software. Uh, these are types of informal trainings. Uh, why do we need these certification recognition and transfer of competencies? Uh, first of all, the uh, AQF and the GVET, because this is what we are uh, talking about, are offering the mobility of learners for vocational education and training. So you can go from one context to another um, and gaining knowledge in different contexts to having, uh, at the end, uh, a certain qualification. Also, it's somehow time-saving because while you have some uh, competencies and skills gained from different con contexts, you can go through a certified evaluator and uh, evaluate your competences and gain the certification for doing a certain qualification without going through a structured training program. And of course, the, um, it, it responds to the needs of the economy at international level, at European level uh, in our case, because uh, this 
uh, type of um, certification offers you the, the chance to have the education done in your country be recognized in other, uh, in other country where your skills and, and knowledge are uh, necessary. So within the European Union, uh, we have the IKF and DECVET, which stand for European Qualifications Framework and European Credit System for Vocational Education. They, uh, both of them have started being implemented in 2009 uh, due to European Parliament recommendation. Um, and they have similar goals, similar, um, um, there are mechanisms created for, by, within the European Union to assure recognition and transfer and learning outcomes and also to assure a certain quality of vocational education and training within uh, European member states. Talking separately, the European Qualification Framework is a sort of um, translation of, of uh, qualifications between a state, a European state to another. So when you have a certain qualification done in, in a country using the EQF, you can uh, compare your qualification level to uh, the, the, the similar qualification uh, in other country. So the, the purpose is to make these qualifications more readable and understandable between different countries and systems. Um, as you will see in this, uh, I included in the presentation these two, um, two uh, I will start maybe with this one, I think it's better. So in the middle you have the AQF, which is stated on eight um, levels of knowledge, skills and um, autonomy. Um, when talking about a certain qualification. And you have on the right and on the left uh, different countries. As you can see, you can have a five level in country A, which is not necessarily corresponding to the same level uh, in other countries. Or you can have nine levels within an, an a country and six in another one. So what happens is that since 2009, when the European uh, recommendation uh, came into force, the states are continuously working in, um, in having this AQF uh, framework as um, useful as possible to, to, to um, make sure that when you go with a qualification in one country, you uh, have the same recognition or the, the corresponding recognition in the country you are going to. Uh, this representation is uh, more, uh, let's say, practical when we talk about the educational system in, um, uh, in European countries. You have here the QF level one and two, which are corresponding to primary school, primary school and secondary school. Also, you have uh, Level three, secondary level, with, sorry. Um, so you have a level three for secondary and so on and so forth, going to uh, the academic doctorate, master, bachelor's. Uh, and when we go to the ECVET, ECVET is a more practical, let's say, more specific. While EQF offers the possibility of uh, seeing the main framework of uh, qualifications, ECVET uh, focuses on the processes necessary for developing the training in order to make uh, the learning outcomes transferable. Uh, so we talk about ECVET when we want to create um, a certain training program because um, as I think uh, in uh, the previous presentations, I think it was Jim's presentation, you have the, the situation when you have to uh, have certain skills in, um, uh, in 
working and doing certain programs and so on. So it was, I think it was a presentation where people were asked about uh, how would you define the, the position, the job you are doing? And you have a lot of answers. So when working with uh, with people, you are a social worker, you are also a project manager, you are also, so, uh, I don't know, uh, marketing specialists, you have a lot of, of, uh, of skills that you need in order to, to do a certain thing. So when we talk about qualifications, it's very, uh, it's very important, important to establish the learning outcomes. Um, and starting from that learning outcomes, you structure your training program. Um, also, if I may, if I may uh, intervene a little bit, just a second. Uh, so you have a system which allows you to transfer uh, uh, from one system to another, it facilitates translation from a national system to another national system, right? And then you have a system of developing trainings so that this translation can be done easier. So uh, EQF is a system for translating. ECVET is the uh, solution for creating trainings that are easily, that are easily, uh, uh, that provides you with qualifications that are easily translated to another system. So this is the first EQF is about uh, translating from uh, a system that helps translating uh, qualifications from one national system to another. ECVET is about developing trainings in order for the EQF to work. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, of course, ECVAT is applicable to all kinds of, of training programs from um, university programs. As you know, uh, the, when you go to university, you have uh, courses with certain number of credits and points and uh, so on and so forth. While, um, but you can also use the ACVAT system for smaller training um, um, programs, for smaller scale training programs. Meaning, so uh, coming back to the to the um, um, back differences, let's say between ACVAT and AQF, uh, both of them are related to the qualification. So. Um, when you have the qualification, you can reach it out through learning outcomes. Uh, and if you have the learning outcomes which come from can come from formal education, from non-formal or informal education. Uh, this is why the ACVAT um, is relevant because you can have, you can go for updating a certain qualification by going uh, from different type of, by gaining the learning outcomes from different contexts, context, context, <laughs> sorry. Um, and of course, like that is, th this is why like that is very important when we talk about European mo mobility. Um, when we talk about ACVET, and uh, developing a training course, you have six main important steps, which are also presented in more graphically here in, the, in, this, uh, in this picture. So first of all, you have the qualification. You need to identify the competencies. You might have in the national framework stand, occupational standards that you need to make sure that your training program uh, reaches through, through the activities and what we, you propose to do in your training program. Uh, then you need to identify or propose the level within the AQF framework. And this is where the ACVET and the AQF are, um, are you need to, to think of these together. Uh, you need to, to see if for the, your training program you need a certain AQF level. You go with your trainees coming from, I don't know, from uh, primary school, from secondary school, from academic level. So you need to figure that out in, in this step, 
when creating your program. Of course, you need to set your objectives. And again, you go to occupational standards, which you need to, uh, to reach through your objectives. Um, also, when you go in, in uh, establishing your activities, um, you, of course, need to set out the time needed for um, gaining these competencies, those skills, those uh, that knowledge that uh, your trainee needs to to reach in order to obtain your uh, qualification. You need to establish the um, number of credits, and this is where um, um, EGVET. Uh, so, for a certain qualification, you need um, to reach certain. Um, outcomes, the outcomes depending on their weight in, in obtaining a certain qualification receive a certain credit, number of credits. Uh, the number of credits are relevant to all, when you go and see a number of credits related to a certain uh, course, for example, in, in the university, you can estimate how important that course is in order for you to obtain the, the diploma, the final license for that qualification. And this is how uh, like the credits, credits are translated. Uh, and of course, a very important aspect is uh, assessment of learning outcomes. So you, in order to obtain a qualification, you need to be assessed if you have reached one or two or all uh, learning outcomes in order to receive the final diploma for your uh, qualification. So you have the, the credit system. When we talk about credit transferability, you have the credit system when you um, can move your learning outcomes from one context, uh, context to another. As I said previously, you can have uh, learning outcomes, I don't know, um, I'm referring for to be more exact, exactly, you have this um, mobility uh, aspect within the Erasmus project, okay? So you have students which are uh, starting their education for social worker, let's say, to become a social worker in Romania, and during the second year of study, they are continuing their studies in, I don't know, let's say Barcelona, for example. Um, using this credit system is possible for the student to gain credits and points for their learning outcomes in other countries and then coming back and have these credits recognized uh, in, uh, in, in another country, not the one where with the, the actual training took place. Um, very important for transferability are personal transcripts, which are also, uh, personal transcripts are actually the, the documents that state the fact that a uh, learner gained the learning outcomes, they gained the credits and the points, sorry. Uh, and they are related directly to the learner. In terms of recognition, um, ECBET allows the evaluation to be done um, partially. So if you have a person who uh, started their uh, education in 2009, but in 2010 stopped, they can retake the, the learning process uh, two years later by having the, the, some outcomes evaluated and do according to their personal transcripts. They have uh, the documents stating that they have reached some learning outcomes before. They can continue uh, two years later the education without going again uh, through the, the education from the beginning. Um, what is very important is that the evaluation of the outcomes can be done only by a competent institution. And uh, we have, for example, 
the situation of um, institutions, by accredited institutions, which can evaluate if a person can do a certain uh, job, uh, can be, for example, um, um, I don't know, um, not necessarily driver, <laughs> but for example, for being, um, let's say, a chef, okay? So if you want to, to work in a restaurant as a chef, you are not necessarily need to go through a training program which lasts, I don't know, several months and you have to be there present and uh, to, the, to the training, but you can go to this accredited institution and only apply for uh, the evaluation of your uh, knowledge and uh, skills. And if you pass that evaluation, that institution can give you directly the certification of you being able to, to work as a chef in a restaurant. Uh, of course, this happens especially uh, to uh, in uh, qualifications which are lower on the AQF uh, thing, we, but they are also relevant for, um, for example, when you are working as a social worker in Romania, for example, and want to go in the UK. Uh, as far as I know, the, value, the um, education in Romania is not necessarily equivalent to the one in the UK. You need to take several um, exams and uh, tests to be done in order for you to, to be able to practice social working in, in the UK, but it's not necessarily to go through the whole evaluation. So partially, the, the education received in Romania is recognized in, in the UK and you need only some some only courses, only few courses and, and steps to be done uh, in order for you to practice that profession in, in, uh, in that country. Um, when we talk about the ACVAT and ECVAT, it's very important uh, in terms of transferability to have memorandums of understanding. Although the ACUF and ECVAT are um, framework which are actively um, put in practice in the European Union, uh, in order to have the qualifications, the outcome, learning outcomes uh, recognized between two different settings, you, have, you need to have memorandums of understanding which are signed by competent institutions. So competent institutions, meaning that they are empowered, they are certified, they are accredited in their own national setting toward to, to give qualifications for their, uh, for their own trainees. Um, so if these memorandum of understandings are not uh, put in place before you ask for the, the um, transferability of your knowledge, the, the recognition will be a little bit uh, harsher, let's say. You, need, you might need more uh, steps to be done. And also it's very important to have learning agreements, which are um, somehow learning contracts because there are three parties involved in, in uh, having these um, transferability done. You have the home institution, so the, for example, the university that a student comes from, the university that the institution, uh, that the learner, the student goes to, and of course the learner which uh, has to take his own responsibility within the learning process. Um, this is, uh, sorry, just a second. Sorry again. Um, so, So uh, mainly these are the, the 
the main aspects that we identified to be relevant and to be, um, I don't know, is a general aspect about the AQF and DECBED. Um, again, going back, the AQF is, I want to put this, uh, this slide again. So the AQF is only um, a framework, a mechanism to evaluate the level of your qualification compared to others, to other national system, while the ACVAD allows you to have partial results, partial training results, and from different contexts, and then gaining them together, going to a certified evaluator and obtaining a certain qualification. And it's also the ACVAD relevant for you as a trainer, if you want to have a training course done for a certain occupation to uh, set your um, goals and objectives, taking into consideration the, the, the learning outcomes, the importance of these outcomes to, to the um, final uh, qualification that you need to, you want to give to the, your trainees. Um, questions, if there are any. Hello. Uh, as as we have already go went through this in previous sessions, I fully understand that maybe the the ones that are hearing it for the first time are like <laughs> a bit <laughs> like let me let me digest all this. So <laughs> I fully understand they don't have immediate questions. Um, but of course, is if anybody wants to raise yeah, any, we actually uh, we in our office had so many discussions on on these topics, and um, I also tried the the personal, I don't know, graphical uh, approach of these aspects, but it's still an ongoing process. So. Um, the AQF and the ECVET are start, started in 2009. For sure, the national qualification framework in each European country is similar in some points, but very different in others. So taking consideration of the mobility of European citizens from, a, from one country to another, because this is mainly the, the goal of, uh, of these frameworks. Um, they are very important, so it's very important, but it's, it, it takes some time to, to make them very practical and easy to, to use because you need to take the, 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 the educational system that you already have in your country and adapt it to, to these um, like, yeah, like that systems. We do have a document which is uh, something that we try to make as easy to follow as possible. So it's, it's a document that we already shared with you and maybe we can share that with our participants. But what I took from all this presentation is that it, are the following things. One, from the, all, all the reading that we did on the topic is, one is that you can transfer uh, uh, your qualifications from one system to another. So if I study to become a chef in Romania, there is an opportunity. There is the option for me to have that uh, training acknowledged in Spain. How that is done is by going through this system of uh, the EQF system. And if I did go in Romania, we have a system which is uh, which classifies chefs under a certain level. There is also a system in Spain that classifies chefs, and I can compare to compare what I learned in, during my training in Romania to what needs to be trained to become a chef in Spain. And if they match, I, I can go and work as a chef in Spain. If they don't match, if I have less uh, learning outcomes acquired in Romania, I can go to additional training 
and get all the learning outcomes that are, that are required in Spain, and I can have my experience recognized in Spain, and I don't have to go through a new training from zero to, uh, uh, all the, to the level that is required in Spain. Or if in Romania is, you have a, a certain level which is, which is more complex than in Spain, then I can go directly to Spain, have my uh, 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 qualifications acknowledged there without going through any training. So that's 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 something to be to that that that's something that I I took out of all this reading. And the other thing is that you can achieve uh, knowledge uh, and have it recognized, even though you don't you didn't get it in a formal context. For instance, if I worked as a baker, uh, or uh, as Jim uh, gave an example a few months ago, if I worked in a bar for eight years, but I don't have a, a paper saying that I worked there, I can go and have my uh, qualifications acknowledged by an, my, by an authorized evaluator without having to go through a score. So having, having to go through a training. So there is, there, I say, I think these are the two most important things that I would take out of this without going back to reading all the steps needed in order to do a, 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 a neck that training, which facilitates all that. These are the two bits of information that I'm taking out of all the reading that we did. And, and in our case, it's very relevant. It was when we find, found out about this, it was very relevant as a, a social organization working with the vulnerable population that you have this possibility of taking a person or to a, to a certified evaluator in order to have, for example, as you said, Alex, with the, the bar thing, you have a bartender a diploma, so you have a person which is unemployed, but doesn't have the time and resources to to go through a training course. So instead of finding the the, um, the time and the financial, maybe, maybe the the course uh, involves spending some money that uh, neither the beneficiary or our organization has. You can take this person to the evaluator and have the, the, the qualification, the diploma obtained only by uh, an evaluation, which is also very, very important uh, for, for, integrate, for integrating the vulnerable population. And I, of course, remind the rest of the participants that you have the material, the document Alex commented in the website in the, in the, with the rest of the materials of the course. So, if you want to go through any of these concepts again, you can go to the website and uh, go through it. I just wanted to, to say that you've, you've done a really nice job. I think this is work that needed doing for quite a while. Um, we've been struggling with this in, in many projects already, and uh, this is a nice uh, overview, although, as you said, it's a snapshot. Things are evolving. Uh, take my case of the UK. We're back at <laughs> square yeah, one or so ground zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Social worker, many of my colleagues in our, my generation went to, to the UK to work as social workers, so that's why it came very quickly in my mind. <laughs> yeah, but uh, from the perspective of Brussels, I think this is really good work. and. Um, as you said, it links a few times to the presentation I gave about the, the competences you acquire through doing things. So thanks very much. Nice work. Thank you. Are there any other questions regarding both the qualification part or the, the first part of the presentation of the labs? Um, we, are, we still have five bit more minutes to, if, if we want to extend, of course we can. Um, I would like to remind, this is the last session we are having on, the, on these uh, trainer trainers. And um, uh, if there are no more specific questions, I would like also to, to have a few round of comments with the participants uh, regarding this two, three weeks of this special training. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I would have loved to do this in Palermo, really, <laughs> all together and, 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 and in a whole week uh, program and having more face-to-face uh, -face participation and, and more, probably more debate. It's much more easy to, to start a conversation face-to-face -face than this way. So yeah, well, try if if there are any comments on the session on today today's session, or if not, I would like to have like a yeah an overview of what you think about this uh, training. Has been has it been useful? Uh, have you uh, got something that you can apply in your uh, day-to-day -day work or does it inspirate uh, new ways of doing things I don't know just if you want I won't force anybody I won't go one by one don't worry <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah it would be nice to have some feedback so I will I will start since I haven't been so present in the last, uh, in the, the previous meet sessions. For me, um, it was very inspiring to participate in this uh, training since I learned a lot of uh, things about urban regeneration. Uh, as because as working uh, working in the in the social field in the pretty much connected to the social problems. Uh, it offered me the possibility to see the problems in a more general way. So having this urban generation as described by, by all of you previously, it offered me the possibility to, to look at the, at the social problems that we try to, to solve here in Yash, but not only from different perspectives. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, I already said that something a little bit on the beginning. I think from the perspective of our work, we, I think what I take is the fact that uh, your approach is very helpful in um, solving some issues that uh, we see in our communities and in our society in general. Uh, I think it helps bring people together. I think it helps bring people together on a real basis because we see a lot of um, misplaced pride and some, um, uh, we see a lot of racism, we see a lot of uh, xenophobia, I don't know whether that, it, whether that it's the actual word, but it's, it's, you know, people take pride in certain things that are not true instead of looking of who they are, what's really important, what heals and what hurts their communities and it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting approach in achieving this real cohesion on real basis and in, in achieving some historical healing and also some in bringing certain groups together. And I think it's something that we, we can explore in the future more. And I, and I, I really, really like this. And I would have loved to see how you're doing, actually doing this in, in, your, uh, in your communities. Yeah, something similar for us also. Um, I mean, it's always useful uh, to, and uh, the group, uh, the Italian group, I think, it's always useful to have this type of training also if it's digital and that this type of um, feeling that, uh, yeah, the, the issue we face are in some way shared with other social worker, youth worker. Um, Mm, so I really appreciate, we really appreciate all, and also help us to focus on um, different perspectives. And uh, yeah, also the session of today, it's really interesting to to understand uh, yeah, the, the real, uh, yeah, the last things we discussed about the, 
recognition of informal uh, competence of uh, vulnerable vulnerable people that should be uh, really important for also for our uh, work. Uh, I mean, in um, in Italy, in um, in the district we are working, should be great to have something like that. Uh, from our side, we find yeah for the recognition we find uh, just a national national level with the university a small solution for our course, but should be great to have a big solution that uh, the one that you propose. Any other comments? I'm happy to hear that. Um, I don't know if from Germany they want to say something. I'm not pushing. <laughs> if you don't, it's okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, with with, with these last uh, comments, I would start closing this thing. So. Just a few minutes more if someone wants to say something. Okay, yeah, actually I can say something. So I found the topics of the of the training actually really relevant and as the others said, um, quite inspiring to conduct a workshop. And since some of us already did some workshops, it was also interesting to hear how like which methods you used and to like hear from others how they were actually carrying out those workshops. Um, yeah, but on the other hand, because we already did the workshop, it was really nice to hear how how others were like um, doing the workshops and good to be inspired, but then maybe we will use it for the next workshop. And I could just always check uh, with what we did and um, other ideas how we could have done it next time. So that was interesting also. Okay, are we finishing? Jim, do you want to say something? You're the only one missing. I'm not pushing, but... <laughs> um, I, I think we did extremely well uh, in these sessions. Uh, this is very uh, counterintuitive for most of us, I suppose, um, doing this online and turning what for each of us could have been a, a day of workshop activity or something a long drink into an extreme dense espresso shot so it was often too information dense so um, we'll look back at the presentations at half speed probably so also if we get access to the presentations things will get a lot clearer uh, but nonetheless i think that went really well uh, we got all the information across we wanted to i think the important question now is to find a formula and that's something I think we should do together a formula for the conference um, without deciding online or offline. We should find a way to make it um, uh, inviting to a larger audience because I think we had an experience that's valuable to other people as well. Um, um, but uh, I think we are still very much struggling with these new formats. Um, we're not um, mobilizing the audiences we want to, so we haven't. Uh, preliminary exercise with the dissemination activity, but then we should all see how can we make this um, enticing, interesting. Um, so that was my shot across the bow. Um, but anyway, thanks all very much. It was very, very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you all for the patience, for the all the presentations, for sharing your experiences. I remind you that, of course, you have the previous contents on the website and that we are uh, slowly but constantly editing the, <laughs> the videos of the sessions and they will be uploaded and the PowerPoints, if, if authorized, also um, to the website. So you will have all the materials there to go through them whenever you want. Um, and yeah, hope to... Hope to keep in touch, hope to see you 
the, the not not the partners, of course. We will see each other, but the rest of you uh, on the final conference. And um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much to you all. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you. Thank you.